Welcome back to P1. Uh, today we're looking at the second part of solving quadratic equations. So last video we were solving by factorizing. This video we're going to solve using the quadratic formula. Let's get started. Okay, so on these first ones it's important to realize that when we're looking at using the formula It's very important that we're looking at these coefficients. So a is the coefficient of x squared in front of the x squared. B is the coefficient of x, so it's the number in front of the x, and C is my constant. Okay? And I must have it in the form of equals zero for this to work. So if I look at this first one here. My value of a would be 1, the number in front of x squared. My value of b would be minus 3. And my value of c would be minus 2. Now, at this point, it's just a matter of plugging these values straight into the formula. So we've got minus b, so minus minus 3, plus or minus square root. So b squared minus... 4 times a times c and then all of that is over 2 times a which is 1 in this case so let's have a look so we've got minus minus 3 so that's just a positive 3 plus or minus square root now 3 squared is 9 I'll take the extra steps this time 4 times 1 times minus 2 is minus 8 so we're going to be taking away minus 8. So it's the same as adding 8 there. And all of that is going to be over 2. So if we look at this now, we've got 3 plus or minus the square root of 17 over 2. And this is my two answers. One when I use the plus and one when I use the minus. So my two values of x are 3 plus root 17 over 2 or 3 minus root 17 over 2. Okay, and if needed, I can also then find that as a decimal answer as well. Now, the second question, um, I've set it up like a, for a common mistake. So quite often people will approach this and think, right, A is 8, B is 3, and C is negative 16 because they've just done it in order of the first number, the second number, and the third number. But unfortunately, that would be wrong. Okay, what we do need to do is we need to make sure that we first got it in the right order or that we are looking at the values in front of the x squared, the x, and then the constant. So I can jump straight in if I wanted to. The value in front of the x squared is 3. In front of the x is negative 16, and my constant is 8. Okay? But it does also make sense to rearrange it first, just so that you don't make those kind of mistakes. And then it's a matter of just substituting in to my formula. So minus b, so we actually got minus minus 16 plus or minus, so now we've got 16 squared minus 4 times a times c, all over two lots of a. So that gives me 16 plus or minus the square root actually give it simplified so square root of 160 which is 4 root 10 and it's over 6 okay now I can actually simplify here because I can divide everything each term by 2 uh, so this would give me 2 plus or minus 2 root 10 over 3 um, it's only really important if we were going to write our answer as thirds but in this one I'm going to write it as a decimal and actually just before we go any further 
I just realised I made such a terrible mistake there. That should be an 8. Half of 16 is 8. What an absolute idiot there. So putting this into the calculator and then, you know, if you've got your scientific calculator and it gives it to you as a third and you want the decimal, just press in that SD button. So it's got S and D and it's got two arrows in between it. That's the button you're pressing. So 4.77 to two decimal places of three significant figures. Or x equals 0 0.558. And both these are the three significant figures. It's also worth noting that if you have a Casio FX991, it does have the formula built in. So you can just simply put the values in and get the, your answers out. Um, UAD MP when you should just be using that perhaps to just check your answers if you're unsure you shouldn't be resorting to that to be able to solve these problems I'll give you a few of these now to try Okay, so one to four, just put the answers up for you. Um, question five, I'll just go through quickly, just because it's a little rearrangement first. Um, now, personally, I would take the two x squared, the negative two x squared, so that it is positive. So that would then be minus three x minus 18. And I would do that then just because I feel that that is a little bit nicer. Okay, but even if you kept it the same size, as long as you use the right values, the signs should take care of themselves. So, if I've got my answers, I'm going to jump to the answers then. 3 plus 3 root 17 over 4. Or 3 minus 3 root 17 over 4. This is obviously if I keep it as a third. Or the three significant figures, I'd have 3.84 and negative 2.34. Okay, so for this one, you need to make sure you know the area of a trapezium formula. So we want A plus B over 2 times by h. So we can know that the area is 50. A we can use as x and b will be our x plus 10 because the a and b are the ones, the two sides that are parallel to each other. So for 2 times and then h will be the distance between them, perpendicular distance between them which is this height. So I can cancel my twos, that will make my life a little bit easier there. Um, we've got 2x plus 10 inside multiplied by x. So we get 2x squared plus 10x. And I'm going to take the 50 to the other side. So negative 50. And then I want to divide by 2 here, so x squared plus 5x minus 25. Now at this point I can see that it's not going to factorise into brackets, and um, you know, we are doing the formula so it should be like that. Um, so now I just want to substitute these values into the formula, so I'm looking at a equals 1, b equals 5, and c equals negative 25. So we got minus b plus or minus b squared minus 4 times a times c. And this is all over 2a. So we got minus 5 plus or minus so that's 125 over 2. Now, square root of 125 can simplify to 5 root 5. So we've got minus 5 plus or minus the square root, oh, sorry, 5 square root 5 over 2. 
now my height is positive okay height can only be positive now let me just let's just give myself a, a little bit more a little bit of line is that a little bit more room there okay so as i was saying um the height that is a distance it can only be positive so that height that we're looking for has to be this minus 5 plus 5 root 5 over 2. Okay? So that's the value of x that I'm dealing with. Now, the height is 2x. So I need to multiply this by 2. So the height is equal to 2x. So it's 2 lots of minus 5 plus 5 root 5 over 2. Now I can see the 2's will cancel. So minus 5 plus 5 root 5. And then if I factorise out 5, you can see I would have, in this case, first of all, I'll write it that way around in the same order. And then getting it the same as the question, you know it's just that root 5 minus 1. And that is then what we were trying to show. Now this one's a quite a challenging one. It's bringing in some algebraic fractions. Uh, first thing we want to do is these fractions we need to make essentially as a single fraction. So to do that, I need to put them both over x, x plus 2. Okay, so I can just multiply these together to get my uh, denominator. Now looking at the top, we're going to have to have an x plus 2 here and an x. And you can always check it. x plus 2 will cancel with x plus 2, leave me 1 over x. x will cancel with x, leave me 1 over x plus 2. So I haven't changed it in terms of its size in any way. So now putting these together, we've got x plus 2 plus x over x, x plus 2 equals 28 over 195. Oh, that's a bit mine. Okay, that's better. So now we just need to simplify and let's see. So we've got. 2x plus 2 on the top and what I'm going to do is if it's okay with you guys I'm going to jump a couple of steps so let's basically multiply by 195 and multiply by this x x plus 2 so 28 times by my x x plus 2 and 195 multiplied by this 2x plus 2. So now we've got 28x squared plus 56x and on this side we have 390x plus 390. Now let's get everything on the side of the x squared. So we've got 28x squared 56 minus 390 is negative 334x and then minus 390. Now I could definitely divide by 2. Um, I could have actually probably done that some of this a little bit earlier. Anyway, uh, but then there's nothing else I can do with this but put it into the formula. And I'm going to skip the actual putting it in the formula. It's just substituting the numbers in. So in this kind of case, we would get these two possible answers. And there we are. Um, hopefully you enjoyed the video and you found it useful. If you have, please like and subscribe. Um, and I'll see you in the next video.